In one of Savathun's altar visits, she speaks of the Nine. What would happen to them if the solar system was destroyed? This made me wonder, do the Nine have a much bigger purpose in this universe, maybe even becoming the new antagonist after the Final Shape expansion? Today we're going to discuss the overall plan of the Nine and what could happen if the solar system is destroyed. In terms of Witch Queen, we don't have much new information on the Nine, I'm just going to throw that out there right away. In fact, it's been pretty stale for them over the last couple of seasons, but Savathun does say this. Why did Mars return? This is the truth. Remember the Nine? Think. What happens to the Nine if this solar system is destroyed? Ask the emissary. Ask the agent. Perhaps they will grace you with an answer. For once. We know the Nine are connected to our solar system in the form of dark matter entities. So if the Black Fleet arrives and destroys everything, what happens? This question posed by the Witch Queen is quite interesting. In one of my recent videos, I talked about the whereabouts of Dead Orbit, who left Earth with their fleets in search of our new home, specifically how to get into the Awoken Distributary. Iraq Jalal says this, We are looking for a microscopic point in a volume larger than the solar system. We thought about using fleets of sensor mites to search for a gravitational influence, but then we realized the Nine are in competition with us to find the singularity and they would certainly use their phantom mass to interfere. From that line, it would seem the Nine too are looking for a new home, and lore in the past definitely seems to back this up. Lavinia comprehends the Nine. They were already ancient when the first human beings named themselves. Their flesh was older than the stars, the dark dust wind that blows through the galaxy, pinched by the gravity of Sol and its planets, drawn into their cores and exhaled again. These were the Nine. In time, loops did form. Great arcs of outbound dust collapsed back to their sources to create circuits of shadow. The thickening and thinning of these circuits were the first thoughts of the Nine. They dwelt in mass indifference, unborn primordial gods. There was no force among them except gravity, no structure except the distribution of mass. Their hearts were in the cores of worlds, but their farthest streams faded out into the turn of the galaxy. They were the fountains of Achilles, the night before chaos. But life arose in the worlds at the heart of the Nine, tiny complicated motions of ecosystems and metabolisms and computations. That life left mass shadows in the wind of the Nine, plucking at them like harp strings. From these trembles of structure, the Nine learned to seed enormous resonating waves, thoughts vaster than worlds. So the Nine awoke, and in time they understood that they were as fragile as they were mighty, for if the light that seeded their thoughts ever passed away, they too would vanish. They had no eyes to catch light, they had no ears to hear, and yet they turned their wills upon the alien world of matter and strove to learn for they knew they had to protect their hearts or die. With a horror of revelation so absolute that it would drive her mad if she still had sanity to lose, Lavinia understands where the Nine have always been. They are within everyone, every system, every living and moving thing. Trillions and pentillions of slim dark matter tentacles plunge through all of our bodies, drinking up the complexity of our lives and thoughts. We are all pinched silhouettes impaled on the twitchlings of infinitely long spider legs. So that line specifically may in fact answer our question. In time, they understood that they were as fragile as they were mighty, for if the life that seeded their thoughts ever passed away, they too would vanish. So the nine exist in our solar system in this dark matter form. They have no ears, no eyes, and they're kind of anchored to all of this life. So if that life dies, they too would vanish, it says. Since Destiny 2 came out with the Red War, we've seen more actions of the Nine, studying the Light and the Guardians and trying to make themselves physical. Portal 3 emitted a living organism. Death was immediate. 
Autopsy team reports a spherical body, radius 1.1 meters, surfaced in hydrocarbon tar. Deep, evenly spaced throats converge in a central cavity, perhaps intended to serve as a lung and stomach. The body consists of an undifferentiated tissue of primitive cells. A basic spasm reflex forces air down the throats. Without enzymes to catalyze metabolism, the organism could not survive. Cell death occurred instantaneously throughout the mass. There were no provisions for self-repair or reproduction. Lavinia reads this again, horrified and fascinated. Something on the far side of the gate is learning to assemble atoms, molecules, even haphazard life. Something from a world of darkness and dust probing its way into our structured existence, trying to cobble together a message, an emissary, a body. The nine are on the far side of the gate. She's sure of it. She's found them. All of this experimentation the Nine has been doing is most likely for this cause, wanting to become physical more than just these dark matter entities connected to the solar system so they to themselves can survive whatever's coming. We know the Nine have studied the light and specifically Guardians, so have they too wanted to gain the power of the light or do they just want to know what it's all about? In passing, Lavinia sees the entire history of the Queen's interactions with the Nine, more than anyone suspected and more vital. She sees how one of the nine blinded guardians to Gaul's approach, risking everything for Gaul would have destroyed the sun and the nine with it to learn how to steal the light. She sees how that one was punished. So that's also cool to think about. There are certain members among the nine who like and worship the light, and there's also the others who tend to lean towards the darkness. They don't agree with each other and they're going about this whole situation in different ways. Some may be trying to make bodies, some may be studying the light, we don't know. Other places the Nine have watched us would be in the Reckoning, siding with the Drifter and holding the Trials of the Nine to study the light even further. They told the Drifter to keep playing his game, remember that, and then the coin showed the pyramid ship on it. Basically saying, keep playing the game with the darkness, keep giving the Guardians these powers. The Nine have a big plan and it makes you wonder if they would be the focal point after the final shape. Will they find a way to escape their ties to our celestial bodies, venture beyond the system in a physical form like we hope to? Or will the witness arrive and destroy the planets, which may be, in part, hurts the Nine in some way? Given we don't have an update on the Nine, it's hard to tell and we can really just speculate. So does something like Mars' transformation affect the Nine in any way? If they are connected to our solar system and our planets, is pulling Mars in and out of reality an issue? It seems like it would be to some extent. And if it does hurt them somehow, the Nine could become desperate over the next couple of years and seasons and maybe turn against us in some way. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. Heard this line from Savathun in the campaign, I'm like, hey, that's an interesting question and what would happen? The answer, it would seem, is the Nine are trying to find a way to make themselves relevant and not in their current form, finding a way into the distributary, finding a way to make a physical body. So that's definitely pretty crazy and I can't wait to see what's next. If you'd like to see some other Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, Guardians, I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.